We are live. Isn't that fun? Oh, there we and, go. And it's amazing. Let me just, I'm just double checking to make sure we're live everywhere. Oh, we are ICS. Look back. <laughs> Who are you? That's I know. So smart with the old tech. I know. So I'm going to do one thing. There. And hopefully, I'll keep the sound off. Hello out there. Listen. Okay, so there we are. We are in a live. So, hi, everybody um, in uh, Facebook land, or if you're on Instagram or YouTube um, or some form of social media. Um, I really, really am excited today um, to have Natalie Coleman. As my guest, Natalie Coleman will be starting a series of real talks called Steps to Serenity at uh, Speak Up and Empower. And, you know, I've got to know Natalie over the past couple of months through Speak Up and Empower. So we are an inclusive community and we are all about conversations that shape the way you live. So real talks. So, you know, I am just so honored um, to have gotten to know you, Natalie. And... We're going to have like a real girl conversation today. Um, and, you know, I think you might be a little surprised out there because people don't always talk as candidly or, you know, from the from the heart. But we as women, we need to start sharing our stories and owning our truth. And, yeah, so now we over to you. Yeah, absolutely agree with you there. And it's interesting you should say that um, because, you know, as I was growing up, you know, talking wasn't the thing to do, really. Um, never really knew how to express myself to, uh, you know, to talk about any emotions or feelings that I might have had. Never speak about them, even identify them. But... Um, but yeah, to be able to talk with trusted friends, mm -hmm. people um, with you know similar interests, similar viewpoints, or not, mm -hmm. without judgment, is an amazing thing. And I just um, I love your speak up and empower because that's what it is speaking up is empowering and i've learned that as i've as i've made my way through the past 47 years <laughs> I, know, I know like we we were always told i remember we're around the same age and i was i always remember when i was younger you know children should be seen and not heard right absolutely absolutely yeah 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 uh, I think it's so different today though i think it's so well, i know from my own personal experience um you know we've you know we did grow up in that um you know some you know some years ago when things society was a bit more closed and a little bit more conservative shall we say um but i definitely think now that the youth and i know my daughter particularly um is encouraged to talk and i just think with all the platforms that um that youngsters have that they that there there is more place for them to to speak right to, you know and um and i think that there's a lot more encouragement of youngsters today to uh you know to to have a voice mm -hmm. to, but we need more of it we do. You know what? Children need to talk about their feelings. They need to share their feelings. You know, Speak Up and Empower started when I turned, um, well, the concept started when I turned 50 years old. And I'm 59 today. That's what, so almost 10 years. The idea of um, women and young girls speaking up, it started that long ago. And I wanted my granddaughter, especially when she was born, Natalie, um, and she's now five. I wanted her to always have a voice and yeah. to always share how she felt. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I agree with you there, and the same as my daughter, who's sixteen now. Yeah. Um, absolutely, you know. And sometimes she doesn't actually want to share, because sometimes there are feelings that um, you know you can't expect a uh, a young teenager to share everything uh, with no. you, but to make sure that she understands that ever she needs to to talk that she's got a place of safety a place of non-judgment and that you know mum has been through a lot of what she probably is feeling right now in a lot of ways you know we were all we were all teenagers growing up and um young women and and and, and there are fears aspirations doubts um you know all sorts of the, you know those those um, conflicting kind of uh, thoughts and feelings that you know when we're growing up and we can't really get to grips with, right? You know, to just be able to you know open that channel, uh, you know, for her to to talk to me, um, and I asked, and but not only to me, and I say this to people: find somebody that you trust. That you can talk to, um, because you know, holding things in, not being able to speak, <clears throat> and I know from personal experience, really has um, has got me into a lot of trouble in my life. Yes, um, and and it took me a long time to, and a lot of pain, to learn to speak. And the beauty, I mean, I would never have thought four years ago, goodness gracious, that I'd be sitting talking to you, um, Karen, I know. On, this, on this beautiful platform, you know, Thank you know you. a heart-centered community that encourages being the, doing things that encourages us to be the best person, the best people that we can. And that's what my life, that's what my, my drive in life is, is just one day at a time to be the best person that I can, to be that that person that God intended for me to be. So yeah. that I can be of service to those around me, be it at home with my family, yeah. be it at home with my friends, be it at the supermarket when I'm saying thank you to somebody who served me at a till or just, I know. Or just smiling at somebody who's walking on the opposite side of the road or, you know, whatever it is. Um, yeah, it's just it's it, it's it's just such a you know a, a lovely opportunity to 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 be able you know to share, and I do thank you for that. Well, thank you. You know, I think um, one of my mentors, Dr. Carolyn Makaka, we always have like girl talks, and I love girl talks, and we always talk about need and love, and we've been such a society of need, and now we're going into a society of love and we want, you know, and I think the chaos, hopefully that's what the chaos will bring is the love. And, you know, I, I think you exemplify it, you know, um, mm -hmm. bringing love to the world. <clears throat> you know, they say that money makes the world go round. Yeah. Mm -mm. No, no, it's, it, it all comes down to love. But and I remember we can talk a little bit about my about my story in a bit because there's a reason yeah. I, a reason that I'm here. Yes. And the journey that I came through. But talking about love, um, when I, <clears throat> a counselor of mine, when I was out um in a treatment center, I thought I knew everything, but I really didn't. And I remember her saying to me, and you know, the, the pennies that started dropping when I came into this new consciousness of life. Mm -hmm. um, she said to me, Natalie, love is a doing word. Love is a verb. Love is an action word. And it is. It is. Because, because love is expressed in everything that we do rather than just say. Um, and um, and it, I think that it just binds us all together if we're if we're open enough to accept it 
appreciate right. it and radiate it. It's all about um, sharing and just embracing the, the, you know, the positivity between us, between all of us. Um, and yes, and indeed, love certainly does make the world go around. It does. Um, it's a beautiful. It's a beautiful feeling. <laughs> it does. But okay, so now we'll t we'll get into the story mm. because I think that's a really good. Place to start. a place to start like have you always felt that way no. absolutely not absolutely not you know i've shared my story a few times <clears throat> and i don't want to go into too much of the gory detail of it but i can say this um i was in a place four years ago and some years prior to that that was absolutely dark absolutely dark and um and i'd say given where i am now most of my life was lived in that darkness although i never thought so at the time um as a youngster I, and you know i i i'm doing so much reading and research and understanding and um and listening to um to how our childhood affects us in our later years and for me to deny that my childhood and the trauma that I've experienced therein to deny that it had any effect on me as I was growing up is what would be untrue mm -hmm. um, and um, and so and 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 so it did and 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 I know that there's neuroscience that talks about you know which side of the brain it affects and and when it's underdeveloped and everything be that as it may mm -hmm. um, I didn't have a grasp as I was growing up on a mature way of thinking and a mature way of, of dealing with life, especially in, a, in an environment that I felt was really out of control at the home. And, um, and from a very young age, I sought to engage in self-destructive behavior. So, um, and that was a way of dealing with pain that I was living with. I didn't know how to express it. We were talking a bit earlier on about talking about our feelings, expressing, you know, um, I, I couldn't I couldn't speak about the way I felt because I didn't really understand what I was supposed to feel as a, a young, vulnerable child, really. And um, and so I resorted to you know self-destructive behaviors and and as a very young girl I developed um, anorexia, um, which is a painful illness. It's it's really really painful uh, to experience, and um, not only that but I also latched onto um, almost overachievement, over exercising. Mm -hmm. uh, and as I, you know, as I as I went through life, it was, you know, uh, over relationshiping, over trying to achieve, um, just any. I'd I'd grapple onto anything that would take me away from the way I felt to feel like something better, and that mm -hmm. I was not because I didn't really have a sense of identity or, or anything as I was growing up. So I filled my life with um, with external fillers right. as opposed to internal fillers. And then when I got to the age of um, <clears throat> 13, um, I discovered alcohol and, um, and I drank alcoholically from a very young age. How old um, were you when you started, do you think? Say again. How old were you when you started? Oh, I was thirteen. I, I clearly remember the day that. Yeah. In fact, you know, <laughs> you know what? I was probably younger than that because alcohol was always in the home. It's always it, it it's was. an. It, I mean, alcohol is everywhere we look. It is part of all of our lives. It's at parties. It's at Christmases. It's at weddings. It's at funerals. It's advertised everywhere. It's glamorized. Alcohol just was part of everyday life and it was always in the home so it didn't seem like anything unusual because I was born into you know born into it and so when I was very young I remember I used to have little uh, old brown sherry I think it was called at Christmas time or if we went to a restaurant they'd give us a little old brown sherry at the door so 
so I, I'd had a taste of it as I um, as I, as I was as I was growing up, but but a proper a proper blackout session I had with a friend when I was thirteen years old, and um, I came out of, that, out of that very worse for wear, very very ill, and um, and and the thing is is that that awful almost traumatic experience didn't didn't frighten me. It didn't frighten me at all, and um, and and I went on to to uh, to to having alcohol around me as I was growing up and um, all the way through my life and it it was just uh, it, it was just a way of life and it was always there um, little did I know that I was actually because um, you know that first that, you know that first time I drank it it was it was like, like I remember I sort of lit up like a Christmas tree and um, <laughs> and it was great and, and I don't think that I was when I started drinking, I don't think I was drinking to escape my, you know, the pain and um, insecurities and, right. and, and inadequacies and lack of self-esteem or anything. But goodness gracious, it did something for me as the years went by that I couldn't do for myself. And so I became addicted to it. And and um, drugs made their way into my life as well. And uh, And so despite living all those years for many years over two decades with 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 the problem um I, I still managed to have a relatively successful life because i was that driven person and always wanted to i i i, I was i was an achiever on a lot of levels and i drove myself to achieve um whether it was truly from within or just trying to you know to fill those masks that right. that, that, I, that I displayed to the world is a, is an, is another is another question but um, but I, I made my way through life okay I did well at school I went got to university um, got my degree I held down some really good jobs and um, and I, I don't like to look at my life as just one big dark blur because it wasn't but the problem with addiction and the problem with alcoholism is that we can live with it for a long time but it is uh, it's a progressive illness uh -huh. and um, when I got it was about seven years ago got to the point where my lifetime of pressure almost pressure build up of not dealing mm -hmm. with the circumstances that had engulfed me as a youngster that I pushed away put into you know just put into that box that that box that I just never wanted to open right. because it was too painful to to deal with that can only last so long it's like a pressure cooker that can only you know steam for so long and it's and it's going to pop eventually and um, a few circumstances kind of uh, came together like a perfect storm mm -hmm. in about 2014 or so. Was that yeah, about, yeah about, it was about 2014, 20, yeah. oh, around about there. Uh, the cracks were starting to show and, um, and my anorexia decided that it would come knocking on the door and uh, and so so did I start to get into that vicious cycle of self-destruction again so I had uh, I had this <coughs> awful anorexia which took on a life of its own right. and I had alcoholism the two of them fighting for airspace in, in my head <coughs> and uh, it, it it really did it, it really got really dire um, to the point that um, there had to be an intervention. And um, <clears throat> I went out to, uh, uh, firstly, by the grace of God, he works through people. But my beautiful family and my husband, who stood by me through thick and thin, um, it sent me out to, to, to South Africa in 2016 to a, a, a treatment facility where my journey of recovery began and where my life 
effectively began. And I can and I can honestly say that from the bottom of my heart is that being introduced to a well, firstly being isolated <laughs> for my own safety and those around me was the best thing that could ever have happened. You know, put, you know, remove me from society and uh, to start gain, gaining a semblance of health because I was hideously underweight, hideously underweight very, very ill and chronically addicted to alcohol to start gaining that sense that, you know, that, that semblance of health and then be introduced to a program of recovery that not only addressed uh, the addiction and with a lot of kicking and screaming, also addressing the, uh, the eating disorder because bulimia was involved with it as well. I mean, it was, it was you know, it was dire but so addressing the primaries but it introduced me to a spiritual way of life i didn't know it at the time because i had no idea what i was getting into honestly i knew i was getting on a plane i was going out there and i was hopefully going to get better and then i could just pick my life up and hopefully carry on you mm -hmm. know and um, and so began the journey uh with beautiful support, beautiful people who pushed me hard, who pushed me beyond myself because myself had got me to the position where um, I was beyond human aid. And so I needed to be in like a holistic program that whilst it was, you know, supported medically and by professionals, I needed to be introduced into um, a program that I could learn to accept help, truly recognize and surrender to the fact that I am powerless to those behaviors, those, those addictions, those behaviors that I kept on repeating day after day, year after year, a lifetime of repeating that did me no good. In fact, just, you know, proceeded to right. destroy me, needed to, to be introduced to um, something greater than me. And and uh, the, the treatment facility is based on the Minnesota model of, of recovery, which is a holistic um, mm -hmm. approach. And within that is the, the 12 steps of recovery. And um, wow. <laughs> I can't, I, I can't wait for I this. Did not see yeah. this one coming. <laughs> I can't wait for your program to, you know, one to learn about the twelve steps, you know, um, so that people out there can identify with the twelve steps, and even if they don't have an addiction to alcohol, but to anything, will be able to adapt those twelve steps into their life. You know, it's. Yep, you know, that's that's absolutely it. I mean, I've, I'm, I'm in my fourth year of recovery, and my goodness gracious, am I learning hour after hour, day after day. I've got so much to still learn, but my goodness, mm -hmm. what I have learned is just life-changing. It's mind-boggling. And and you speak, Karen, about um, addiction. The first thing we think of at addiction, when we think of addiction, we think of drugs and alcohol. Yes, yeah. indeed, those are hideous and um, and, 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 and they're painful. But if we think about the the definition of addiction, of, of addiction really, mm -hmm. it's uh, repeating a behavior over and over, even though it's doing us harm. And so it doesn't necessarily only have to be a substance. It can be, you know, it can be people related. It can be codependent relationships. Why am I in a relationship where I don't know where my identity starts and someone else's identity begins. And I can so relate to that as I was growing up, caught because I did have no sense of self, I got caught up into relationships um, that I was looking for identity and um and 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 when those relationships broke up, I fell to pieces, yeah. absolute pieces. Because it was, I, I couldn't be anything without that person or those people. So there's, you know, there's, there's relationship um, addiction. You know, 
people talk about sex yeah. addiction, money, which shopping, you know. People you know, hoard. They hoard, you know, because yeah, they try to ease the pain. And, you know, I think nowadays, okay. too. Short yeah. 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 And nowadays, our youth are cutting, right? So to ease the pain. You know, people actually cut themselves to, to and, you know, and that to me is an addiction because it is because because is the is that self destruction is that self harm doing me any doing right. me any good no it's not is it relieving pain yes it is yeah. is it momentary yes it is am I going to do it again even though it hurts me and those around me yes I will because it it fills that hole it it soothes the pain for me right now and so I don't have to think about that stuff whatever that stuff is. But to get back to, you know, addictions, yeah, shopping, uh, like we were saying, you know, the money addictions, gambling, technology um, in this world that, I mean, it, there's so many things that infiltrate our lives that we think are not really taking over, but, but they do. And are they doing as much good? And they probably aren't. Um, food. Food mm -hmm. takes itself into... The you know anorexia and bulimia, which we've spoken briefly about that, which is terribly painful. Um, you know, addicted to the feeling of um, the, the, to the feeling of of the relief it brings, and the, um, the take, you know the, the hunger takes me away from the pain of having to think about the other things. So I'd rather concentrate on yeah. starving myself. And then also overeating. Overeating. You know, Especially oh with COVID. Whoa. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, chocolates. I'll tell you what, when I went into recovery, right, I'm off the booze. <laughs> <laughs> you think I could put down the chocolates? And so I had this, like, I can't eat because I'm going to get fat. But then I had totally just, like, I had one chocolate, and that was me. I just, because I, I hadn't had chocolates for years, and all of a sudden, and I still do, I do love a chocolate, the truth be known. Um, but yeah, so there's, you know, that comfort, that comfort food. Um, but besides, you know, this work, oh, work, addicted to work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, there's another, uh, a, another, oh. bless you. Thank you, something honey. Else, <laughs> you know, something, something else that, um, that could present itself as a, as a dysfun dysfunctional, but a, um, a behavior, a self-destructive behavior. Um, it's not okay to work from five o'clock in the morning till eleven o'clock at night, five days a week, sometimes six days a week. What so, something you know? What what what? And, and you know, and I know this because I've been guilty of it, mm -hmm. and still can sometimes find myself. And I need to draw that, you know, draw you know, put the boundaries in, um, and and exercise. Exercise as well can be addictive. And that I know that that I uh, that I learned, and it's an interesting it's it's an interesting thing I have to tell you. Yeah. Um, so when, before I came into into recovery, so I terrible to eating disorder, uh, over, you know, over, addicted to exercise. I didn't think I was addicted to exercise, but I absolutely was. You know, chronically addicted to alcohol, and. This is how this is how powerful the twelve steps are mm. for me. I couldn't start a day without without going running or doing some like really strenuous exercise. Right. Um, pretty much, you know, well for for as long as I can remember. Um, but when I can't, but when I started to recover and I and and I'd surrendered and um, started to accept help and really started to engage in the program of recovery that desire was gone because i'd beat myself up terribly if i didn't if i didn't get out there and hurt myself with exercise and and it's and it's it, it's it's quite incredible that i look now i didn't think i was addicted to that but i was absolutely addicted to alcohol i mean to exercise because of the way it made me feel I couldn't, I couldn't do without it and whilst it served me well and I kept fit for a very long time make no mistake 
it wasn't the only the only reason that I engaged in in such ferocious exercise right. you know, all my life. And um, and when when I was in in treatment. I, th I thought that they didn't know what they were talking about because all I wanted to do was go and exercise and they wouldn't let me because they could see exactly why I, you know, be, why I wanted to exercise. Besides that, I didn't have any calories to burn, but never mind that. Um, but yeah, so so all of, you know, all of those, those um, self-destructive behavior, oh, universal kind of addictions and, and, um, but, but, do you know what else we other behaviors that we that I know me personally right. um, that I keep on going back to, but I'm learning to step away from and I've learned to to, mm -hmm. to get away from is um, Tommy Rosen. He's amazing. Uh, he, he he's a master in uh, in recovery. He talks about um, the aggravators, negative thinking. How many of us and how often have I wo woken up in the morning and I'm just engulfed, not now, but, you know, in the past, woke up, where did these negative thoughts come from? And not being able to manage them and dispel them, becoming accustomed to them, repeating them, even though they're doing me no good, but not knowing where they're coming from and how to prevent them, how to get rid of them. You know, negative thinking, we... You know, it's something that keep on going back to and um, and self doubt. That's negative thinking. You know, aimed at me. How, what does that affect? It affects my self esteem. Why do we keep on going back to it? Why do I keep on doubting myself? Um, things like procrastination as well. Do you believe that when you have an addiction issue, that you always replace it with something else? You know, people people say that you might move from one addiction behavior towards one thing and go to something else. But until you actually get help for that behavior, you just keep changing what you're addicted to. You, uh, you know what? I think that that is absolutely true. Mm -hmm. It might be something really small, but it might be something else that um, that, that there is almost a universality of um, of addiction. Absolutely, and um, and that's why when you know uh, when we when we come into recovery for whatever it is, right? It's so so important to understand the concept of cross addiction. Example: I was in recovery. I was in treatment. Stop the alcohol, the crack, yeah. those those chocolates came yeah. along. You know. Mm -hmm. And, and also, and I've seen, you know, um, I've seen as well um, people come into recovery and they get absolutely addicted to exercise because, be yeah. you know, let's say they have unhealthy lifestyles, all of a sudden they feel healthy, you know, they've got a consciousness that they never had before and, and, and health is something that they're going to strive for and become addicted to exercise. Right. So, absolutely, Karen, it, it is something. Now, I'm not an addiction specialist not by any stretch of no. the imagination but my experience and the people that I've surrounded myself with that I've been fortunate enough to over the last four years has, has taught me you know a lot about um, about that um, and, and what the 12 steps you see mm -hmm. what the 12 steps has taught me and this is the aim of it I'm going to jump right to step 12. Yeah. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. To get to a place of freedom, most from myself, the process that I went through gave my spiritual awakening. Mm -hmm. I, I, I experienced a spiritual awakening. Now, my case is different because I actually remember the day that I had a spiritual awakening and it's not like that for everybody. But right. the process of the 12 steps takes us so beautifully through, a, you know, acceptance of ourselves, acceptance of help, forgiveness, 
process of looking at ourselves for our weaknesses and our strengths. Um, through taking almost like an inventory of ourselves and identifying what has, what behaviors, what character traits have kept us stuck from moving forward and being the person that we wanted to be. Um, through a process of, of that self-discovery, extremely powerful in step four, where we identify our past behaviors painful it can be painful but but very very powerful very powerful um but the steps you go through them in in an order for a reason so that by the time you get to you get to look at your your life your part to play in those discomforts that you've that you've held on to for so long we're not on our own because we have realized that um, and I, certainly I did that I'm not on my own because I, I have a power greater than me that everything is going to be okay and you know and as the weeks go by you know we'll we'll talk about each of the steps but you know there's there's actions that we take through the process that is healing because we, we forgive ourselves we forgive others we we um make amends because we've recognized our part to play yes in, and there is believe it or not all the resentments and all of the um the the the, the negative thoughts that we've held on to all of our life particularly resentments that can keep us unstuck we've always got a part to play even if it's a small one and I agree. Even, and even if there's an Put it this way sometimes if we truly don't have a part to play in something that's happened to us we still have a responsibility to accept let go yeah. move on so it's a process of surrender faith acceptance forgiveness making space for um for quiet time and reflection through you know through some you know through the steps that we go through mm -hmm. um constantly identifying our behaviors each and every day making amends as we need to but there's one thing i can say is that um it's a it's a path of spiritual progress not perfection right and, um, you know, for someone who was an atheist, I really was, because if I couldn't control it, and if it didn't do according to my outcome, I had I didn't want anything to do with it. And quite frankly, I would uh, be quite insulting of people who had spirituality or a faith. Or I, I didn't understand it, and I chose not to understand it, and I was dismissive of it quite really so. So why for someone like me to um, to have had got to the point where I was done, that I managed to open my mind enough to accept that there was something greater than me and that I'm not on my own, is just uh, it's just an it's it's just so life changing, so amazing, and um, total rebirth, and I. I just I get so excited about it and and um, and I just want to share with anybody that um, that might be struggling with and, and and I have done so over the last you know the last four years anyone that's struggling with being stuck in self-destructive behavior just using these simple tools these simple tools of the 12 steps which is a design for living because it's based on honesty, open-mindedness, and a willingness to change. It's it's it can, it can set you know as it did set me free from um, from those things that are keeping us stuck and from being who we were always meant to be. Finding a purpose. Um, yeah, and, and 
and so, and some and you know who I'm and I'm learning. I'm I'm discovering what my purpose is. And, which is, and you have purpose, huge purpose, yeah, a truth, yeah. a truth. You know, I was devoid of anything that was slightly uh, deep. Right. You know, everything materialistic. Um, you know, superficial, uh, people related, you know, there, there was nothing and, and I couldn't get my head around what's your truth and, you know, what, 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 what do you, you know, but, um, but to, to, to come from that kind of walking dead that I was most of my life to a place of enlightenment almost. Yeah. It's just so beautiful that when I wake up every morning, in fact, no, when I go to bed at night, I'm excited because I know I'm going to be waking up in the morning to another That's day. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's you know, it, it, and that is truly how I do feel. Yeah. Um, it, it's just so amazing. And and sometimes I just feel so excited. I'm like a child that um, that I've just I've just discovered that there's so much more to life than just what's on, you know, that, that's what, what's on the outside. But mm. we live in the real world. And you see, this is, um, this is the biggest thing that I've learned is to live life on its terms. Because I, I do, that. yeah, with gratitude. Mm -hmm. See, um, to live life on its terms because... You know, I have a job, which I love, mm -hmm. and it can be difficult and challenging. Mm -hmm. And as I've had, you know, previous jobs um, and life situations, you know, be they at home or, you know, really challenging situations. But the way I've learned to deal with them now is poles. It's, it's the complete opposite to the way I would have dealt with them before. Run away medicate self-medicate um not get to the bottom of why i feel the way i do about a certain situation and i'll go I, again i'll say i still get myself stuck and i have to put my hands up and say oh i was wrong there because there was some disappointment and i can feel it in my i can actually physically feel the dishonesty and um so what this program has taught me is to start living in a line, living in alignment with those things that I value, love, safety, um, compassion, um, honesty. Start in all aspects of my life to try to live in alignment with that. Um, and I'm learning all the time and, and you know, and I know it's possible because it's someone like me that was hopeless to be so hopeful. As a result of, of these 12 steps and community and family um, and support, but, but hard work and um, a commitment. It is, it is, it is, it is, it is, it is, Anybody that's struggling to be able to, um, to, to, to make their way out of the place in which they're stuck. I know. I, I wanted to comment on one thing. In 2016, um, when you were awakened, globally, the, more, the one thing I've learned um, since um, I started Speak Up and Empower is that women and men all over the world, it was became awakened in 2016. So if, if you talk to anybody um, about it, those, I'll ask, like I can always say, when did you awaken, spiritually awaken? Was it in 2016? And the answer, usually 95% of the time is yes. So wow. I believe that in 2016, you know, and this is just my belief, that yeah. there were so many people all over the world that were being spiritually awakened because they had purpose. They had God's work to do. Yes. And so, you know, we've gone from pandemic to chaos and then 
you know, we'll see what happens next. But people like you, you know, and others out there who have truly experienced it, you know, have, have experienced that darkness and, oh. and the place where they didn't know if they were going to return to the most beautiful, enlightened person that you are today and actually sharing it and teaching it. It makes you such an empathetic um, lover of the world, you know, yeah. I guess. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. And, and you've just said it there, empathy. Yeah, it did, because you can't understand unless, you know, I, I, a lot of people say you can't understand unless you've gone through it, unless you've experienced it. It's very hard to put yourself in somebody else's shoes and cast judgment or, yeah, um, you know, you can't do that. You just, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, I, I agree with you. And, um, and I'll add to that. Mm -hmm. even, you know, even though um, I might not know what it feels like for a person to be experiencing a level of pain that they might be right. in right now, I can try. Mm -hmm. I can try and put myself in their shoes. I couldn't entirely, but I can try and I can listen, even if it's even if it's just listening to what you know the pain that that person is going through. Mm -hmm. I can do that. Um, I love. People. And that's why I love my job because I'm around people that yeah. are. Um, and just, you know, just, yeah, just even if, even if I don't have a solution, it's listening and perhaps finding a route for the path for the direction for someone to seek help. Right, right. And we will be doing, we do so much of that through um, yeah. Speak Up and Empower. So yeah. it's a lot of people, when I first started, it said, you know, I'm not a speaker, but you don't have to be a speaker. <laughs> you know, if you put something have, to say. Yeah. Do you have a story? Do, yeah. You know, or do you have a skill set? Or do you have even um, the love to share with somebody else out there? You know, it's, uh, we have, we're starting youth mentor programs now. And with David Gershon, Peace on Earth. Yeah. We yeah. are like going into such incredible um, in uh, such an incredible direction, but it's based on a truly heartfelt, safe, secure community. And, you know, we tr we're trying to really keep it like that. So it's, yeah. you know, um, and the one thing is when you do join us, it, it, you know, we do have rules. <laughs> I'm honest about it. We have rules. But, um, you know, it keeps us very on the same path. And I think that's so, you know, so important. You know, um, when you're in a community, you want to totally support your members. And Natalie, you just have so much love to give. I and do. so much wisdom. And wisdom. I and that's, when I look at you, I think, oh, girl, you have so much love. You have so much wisdom. And that smile, <laughs> that million dollar smile, you know, um, we are very blessed to have you. And I'm, I'm, we are, yeah, we are so looking for, you know, your show. Yeah. And uh, so, um, yeah. So yeah, tell so, it, when, when, the, when is the show going to be? Okay. So um, we're going to be starting next week. Right. Um, uh, it's three three o'clock your three, uh, e three Eastern Eastern, yeah. Eastern time. It's eight o'clock um, GMT time here in in the UK. Um, at eight o'clock, as we have, mm -hmm. have been now, at three o'clock yours. <clears throat> um, each week, I'm going to have a guest on the show who would have um, been through you know, similar experiences as myself, um, but have, but who have found um, a new way of life, um, just found themselves and have a story to share, um, moving from the darkness to the light. And what I'm going to do each week is we're going to take a step, talk about that step, 
what I would like to say at this point, now if anybody knows anything about the 12 steps, they might associate it with one of the fellowships right. because um, the 12 steps was born of, um, was, uh, was, was designed, developed um, by Bill Wilson and uh, Dr. Bob Smith um, in, alcohol, with, uh, in Alcoholics Anonymous. And that became the, <clears throat> basically the, uh, the program as designed by Alcoholics Anonymous back in 1939, it was released. But the, the strength and the success of those 12 steps in changing the lives of so many sufferers and their families, restoring people to, uh, to sanity and happiness and giving people a life and hope. Um, was that powerful but I don't speak on behalf of any fellowship I was fortunate enough to to be part of fellowship is obviously where where I've learned it but I think everybody on earth children should be exposed to it at school you know it's one of the greatest pieces of wisdom and writing of the 20 of, of our time it really is because of its simplicity and effectiveness in changing people's lives. So each week I'd like to take a look at the mm -hmm. step, break it down, well, exactly what the step is, and the, the, the spiritual principle related to that step. And my guest and I will have a chat about their journey and what that step meant to them, how, you know, um, similar to what we've been, we've been doing now. Um, so that will take us over 12 weeks and then we'll go back to um, the, the, the next 12 weeks. So, so it's, it's going to be a lot of fun, um, beautiful people that, um, that will be sharing their stories and their strength, their hope and experience. And hopefully just uh, shed light on, on this beautiful process that... A lot of people otherwise wouldn't have wouldn't have known about and and the thing is it's free it's free yes you're not paying for it the and you're not, you don't have to go out of your home if you're at home and you're afraid to go out yeah this yeah. is be at home that, that, that's the thing and and this 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 program is a free program all all you have to do is have a is, is, is be willing to be honest and open-minded to new thoughts, new ideas. Um, yeah, and let the magic, you know, it, it's the magic happen. <laughs> I know. Uh, it's just, it's, it's life-changing. And I just, I, I can't speak more highly of the efficacy but it, it, it's, it isn't a magic wand because there is work that's involved. But crikey Moses, is it a labor of love and a way of life that is just so rewarding? Because we can't do this on our own. <laughs> no, no, no. And yeah, and that's, that's the whole thing. A lot of times people think, believe they can do it on their own. And, you know, you can't. You, you need people. That's, you need community. You need, you know, yeah. unconditional love. People don't get that, unconditional yeah. love. And, and no judgment. Mm -hmm, no judgment. Because, you yeah. know, we're all human. We all make mistakes. It doesn't matter who we are. We make yeah. mistakes. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. I, I, daily. <laughs> I know. I know. Daily. I know. So, Yeah. <laughs> Well, we are just so blessed to have you with us. And so you know, I'm, you. I'm so excited about our friendship that we've made through this. You know, I agree. We, we've had, we have the most incredible, <laughs> incredible <laughs> conversations. <laughs> and, you know, and there's no judgment. So, like, when you talk about Walking Dead, <laughs> I have to talk about that. I said to Natalie, you know, I, we were talking one night, we we're having girl talk. And, this is just a cute way of ending it. And I said, you know, people think I'm crazy, but I sort of got addicted to The Walking Dead. My kids were watching it. Yeah. And like, 
mom, you need to watch this show. So the first time I watched it, I was like, oh, really? And then I started watching it and then fear of the, and you know, oh, and yeah. it was just, and, but you loved it too. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> and, and that's it's, a real conversation, you know, and that's what, what you get with us, our real conversations. And I wouldn't it. say that to most of my friends. That was my favorite movie because they would think I was a little bit like, <laughs> But it's almost it's almost like um it's almost like a guilty pleasure. Yes. When you, when you get like hooked up into into a series. Because yeah. I've got a couple of them as well, but you know, like seriously, Natalie, have you got a life? But it's almost like a guilty pleasure. Just I know. picking up where I left off on a on a great, you know, series or box set. And 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 it just and it's it's so funny that something like that can can bring people together mm -hmm. strangely because it develop, you know, it it opens up a conversation. Yeah. And yeah, it, it you know, and you find something in common with yes. somebody. And that and that leads to more conversation. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, if, I'm just thinking of I'm thinking out aloud I here. Know. <laughs> I know because I I never, it, it, I never shared that I, I, so we're sort of, but I want people to understand. So I never shared with anybody that I got hooked on that, right? <laughs> and, and, you know, yeah. the guys at work, when I, they knew that I got hooked on it because all yeah. of them, well, anyways. So, but to find another woman who was hooked on it too, it was like, it's yes. Yeah. And, and so, you know, when I think of what you're what you're doing, you know, your 12 steps to recovery and, you know, it, other people are in the same place that you're in or may think the same things you think and you're afraid to talk about it. Yeah. And, yeah. But you know what? There will be people who understand you, you know, just, you know, every. Or, yeah. or they may know somebody. Yes. Who they see might be stuck. Um, and and hopefully as the weeks as the weeks go by, we can unravel a little bit week by week of um, of the process and, and and you know through the conversations how we got unstuck. It is. You're not the only one. I always tell people, you're not the only one. And when we start talking about it, when we start talking about mental illness, when we start talking about suicide, when we start talking about our fears, yeah. and, and we know we're not the only one, it makes it far more bearable. Mm -hmm. We're able to get help mm. or seek yeah. help and not be afraid. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. You, know, yeah. And, you know, that is one thing um, that I, that I, that I do wish I had done at an earlier age, but I didn't because I, I clearly was not ready to start acknowledging the pain and talking about it. I wasn't ready yet. And I think God has a plan and a timing for everybody. Um, but if I think that if I had started to uh, get honest with myself from an earlier age, a lot of the pain would have been avoided but then I think to myself and I just want to I, I just want to say one thing I am weirdly grateful for ev all, for everything that I've been through and because if I hadn't been through that being set outside the gates of hell for as long as okay. I did I would not be in the happiest place that I could possibly be now, knowing that my life is only going to get happier, provided I keep a, a fit spiritual condition, I wouldn't be where I am now. So would I change the past? I, I, I don't know. I would, I, do, do you know where I'm coming from? I, I just, that, my mom made that comment to me. My mom um, has dementia, severe dementia. So there's times when she comes in it and out of it. And a few years back, she said, you know, you're now building the type of company you always wanted to build. You know, you're, you're starting to find yourself, you know, your true self. 
she said, would you have changed your past? You know, she said, when you were younger, you talked about being a journalist. You talked about traveling and then you stopped doing it all. Would you go back and change it? Like when you were 20 years old. And honestly, I, I can't say I would, you know, even in the darkest moments, I can't say I would because I am the woman I am today because of that past, you know? And I think that's so like, and we're just normal women, you know, we're, we're, I, and I shouldn't quote say normal, but we're just like everybody, every yeah. other woman out there. Yeah. And so that's why it's really important, especially for younger women or women struggling that, or men, you know, men, oh, yeah. yeah, we have to include the men, you know, who are, who are struggling that there can be light at the end of the darkness. You just have to find your purpose. You find your purpose. You speak your truth. And, but nobody else has to understand. Nobody, just you. And it starts with self-love self and self-acceptance and forgiveness. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. 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 We can, yeah. <laughs> I know we can go on forever. I know, we can go on forever, but the time. No, we do this. We do this. Seriously, after our, our our little Netflix thing, it's like let's talk about it, <laughs> and it, the conversation just flows. And I think that's what our talks are like. And that's what real talk is all about. It is, you know, no holding back. So um, we are so excited for everybody out there to join Natalie Wednesdays, three p.m. Eastern time, five okay. p.m. Oh, sorry, Mondays. I said, Oops, I'm moving ahead. Sorry, Mondays <laughs> at 3 p.m. Eastern time, 8 p.m. UK time. Um, we are, Speak Up and Empower is now in 88 countries, and we now have Speak Up and Empower TV. So if you have a voice that needs to be shared, we'd love to hear from you. Anybody in the community, you can reach out to, um, and they'll explain our community uh, to you. So, and if you want to mentor young people, we're really looking for, um, David Gershon is going to be introducing a Jedi program. So for, I know it is so incredible. And uh, so if anybody wants to be a, a Jedi, you know, please reach out to any of us as well. And, you know, we truly are um, all about empowered healing. Exactly. Exactly. So thank you. Have a thank wonderful you. week. Thank, thank you, you so Natalie. Much. I love you. This love is you. Yeah. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye.